What they compared here was total fasting to protein supplemented fasting, a very low calorie ketogenic diet. And these are differentiated substantially in terms of the effect on resting metabolism. And as you can see in the highlighted sentence here, basal metabolic rate showed a significant decrease, 25%, during total fasting. Um, uh, and this was a, for a period of 30 days. There is this, this body of data uh, that, I, that has not been refuted by, by, let's say, countervailing science. So we try to put it into a, just a simple composite diagram. And if you look at it here, in the, in the early initial few days, you can probably, you can sometimes see a re, an increase in, in uh, uh, resting metabolism, but then a long progressive thing that goes out past 30 days, where the body is becoming increasingly conservative with its calories as its energy reserves are being depleted. And this is not protected very much by adipose tissue. It's protected a little bit by adipose tissue, but having extra body fat doesn't protect your body from this decline in resting metabolism. And then the other question that has not been answered in a well-done prospective study is, okay, if it goes down that much in 30 days, and then you stop fasting, how soon does it come back up? I mean, that would be good to know. And I don't know of any paper that studied that in a, in a prospective way. In a kind of perverse way, we do have some data on that. And that was from this really unfortunate experiment um, uh, called the Biggest Loser Study, where <laughs> obese people who were, were, were induced to do absurd amounts of exercise and extreme caloric restriction in order to get the most rapid weight loss possible. And to the credit of some people, they decided they'd study them, not just while they were doing it, but, but follow them up on them. And there's this. Um, uh, referenced by uh, uh, Fogergill here, uh, published in the Journal of Obesity last year, in which they looked at the effects of this on resting, this experience on a group of these people on resting metabolism five years later. And when they did careful body composition analysis, so they measured lean body mass, and me lean body mass is, has the highest correlation with resting metabolism across individuals. But when you took the same individual and took a, a kilogram of lean body mass before they went through this extreme privation and ex excessive exercise, uh, they started out at 34 mils of, of oxygen per kilogram body weight per day at baseline. And five years later, even though they regained much of the weight, their resting metabolism was 27. So that's a 20% persistent reduction in resting metabolism after five years. So if you think this is a transient effect in everybody, maybe it is a transient effect in some people, but in these people, this was not transient. This was permanent metabolic damage. And I'll just put it in those terms. This is a grumpy old intern is talking. <laughs> um, so now, now let's talk about nitrogen metabolism because lean body mass is an important determinant of, of well-being and function. And losing lean body mass uh, is seldom a good thing. Losing fat mass, probably a good thing. Uh, if you're a bodybuilder who decides to run a marathon, yeah, you should lose some body mass if you want to run a marathon. But why would you want to go out and run 27 miles anyway when you can do it in a car in a short period of time? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, first there's a, a little lesson here in protein turnover. And I took a graduate course in protein metabolism. It was a whole a whole semester at MIT, so I'm going to try to make it a little simpler for you. Um, but if you just think in terms of what determines how much lean tissue you have in your body, part of it is how much protein is coming in your mouth. So, so protein intake is, is an important component. Well, let's just say somebody's eating 100 grams of protein. And if they meta digest, metabolize that protein, and then excrete the equivalent amount as, quote, nitrogen, that, turn, that 100 grams of protein is turned into about 16 grams of elemental nitrogen, which comes out of the body in multiple forms, when we're in a fed state mostly as urea. And so if you have 100 grams of protein coming in, 100 grams of protein going out, you, day by day you maintain the same lean body mass, which is probably a desirable thing in most states, uh, unless you're a bodybuilder trying to be better than Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. But what, the interesting thing is what's going on in the middle, this, what we call protein turnover that when protein is digested, it's broken down to amino acids, they enter the bloodstream, and they, those entering amino acids can be used for protein synthesis. But at the same time that you're eating 100 grams of protein, your body is typically breaking down 
400 grams of protein. And using the 100 grams that comes in, it's synthesizing 400 grams of protein. And then you have a, the, the equivalent of nitrogen equivalent of 100 grams coming out. In the meantime, you've got 10 kilograms of, of protein in your body. You know, this is the quote average typical 70 pound, five foot and 10 inch male kind of thing. Uh, so if you look at it, if 1% of your, your, your body protein content is coming in each day, 1% is going out. So you think that's a pretty small amount. But if you stop the protein coming in, you don't stop the turnover. And so the excretion tends to continue. 